Saturday. I watched you fly away. Has it ever occurred to you that something so small like this object can be the one difference that can save the lives of many? I turned around and waved goodbye. Through a recent survey that we sent out to Monta Vista students, we found out something horrendous. Did you know that 76% of Monta Vista bikers that took our survey feel unsafe on the road because cars are continuously intruding into bike lanes? Then the question arose, why? Why are these percentages so high? After doing some research, we decided that the lanes are not clearly distinguished, resulting in a more dangerous commute for those who regularly bike. We continued to investigate this nightmare and realized that we were not the only ones that noticed this. Check the dial tone. 55% of the interviewed Monta Vista students feel as if the bike lanes and the car lanes are not notably separated. But when I try to speak, the reception gets so weak. I took an With our continued investigation, we discovered that over 50% of Monta Vista bikers had at least one accident while 32% of student bikers surveyed were also in an accident more than five times. The main cause of these accidents are clear to everyone. The line between the bike lanes and the regular lanes are not clearly defined. But how do we go about solving this problem? To completely satisfy all naysayers that do not believe that bot stunts will work and are simply a waste of money, we interviewed a teacher at Monta Vista High School, Mr. John Stark, an avid biker who regularly comments on the dangers of biking to school. I've seen a lot of people who are just kind of uh, uh, lack precision in their lane placement. <laughs> it's going to be kind. You, you, if you bicycle along, people will pass you and you'll look and you'll notice that they're driving along with the, the, the right two wheels and you know an eighth at least of the car in the bike lane and the driver's oblivious to it, has no idea they're cruising along that way. There's law now in California that says you have to give a bicyclist three feet clearance. And I've had that happen maybe twice since that <laughs> law happened. It's, they just, they don't realize how wide the car is, they don't know they're drifting into the lane. Our goal by implementing the bot stops to reduce the need for ambulances because the number of accidents on the bike lanes will be dropped tremendously. Bot stops are small bumps on the road, used to divide two lanes. Bot stops were initially used to wake up sleepy drivers on the road. When a driver accidentally starts to shift lanes, they are warned by the nosy bumping of their tires against the bot stops. These vibrations alert the driver and keep them focused, preventing accidents between two cars. Our vision for bot stops is to implement them in between the car lanes and the bike lanes. By doing this, it can help both drivers and bikers by increasing safety, reducing the number of collisions between car and bikes. We realized that we need to find some solid evidence that this idea works in order to gain the support of the majority of residents and students from Cupertino. In order to do this, we investigated a town in Riverside County that had a high number of annual accidents. The Baker Burton and Lundy firm gave an estimate that $11.6 million was the overall cost of accidents in Riverside County. The accidents that occurred at a specific intersection resembled in the case that the law firm handled, had gone above and beyond 20 accidents, which is a dangerously high number for one intersection alone. There are always many doubts on the issue of money, but the real advantage of bot stocks is that they are rather cheap, and most they only cost a dollar each. The ones that we found suitable for the job are only 53 cents per dot. For such a price, we can do something as great as saving lives and protecting the students. The bot stunt installation can be thought of as an investment for the safety of our community. If you provide us with $1,000, just imagine the change that we can bring to our own society. The action level will drop and the roads will become a lot safer. The safety of our children and young adults should always come first because they are the future of our society after we pass. So what world will we live in if there was no future?